The global music subscriber base continues to grow strongly with 523.9 million music subscribers at the end of the second quarter of 2021. And Spotify is the market leader with 31% market share and Apple Music is in second place with 15% market share. Daniel Ek, the co-founder of Spotify, was born and raised in Sweden. And as a child, he became an expert in web programming. At the age of 14, he set up his first website creation and design business, by which time he was earning thousands of dollars. He even encouraged several friends from his class to work on his little project. When he was 16 years old, he discovered the powerful company Google and felt very attracted to work there. Because, in a way, he had been programming for many years and believed he had the experience, but Google rejected his application, claiming that he still did not have any degree or study related to the computer world. Daniel did go to college, but only for a few weeks. However, as a good entrepreneur, he continued with his own projects. A life-changing deal happened in 2006 when he sold his online marketing company for more than $1 million. This company was called Advertingo and was sold to Trade Doubler, making the 23-year-old Daniel a millionaire. At first, Daniel was quite happy about what he had achieved. He was very young and had practically started from scratch, being totally self-taught. But soon he began to feel an emptiness inside, even going into a depressive spiral. He realized that no matter how much money he had generated, he needed to continue undertaking new creations, which was what really fulfilled him and made him happy. So the young Swedish man was not quite ready to retire, especially since he sensed a great opportunity for a new business. At that moment, he envisioned another great project. At that time, there were programs that made it easy for users to exchange MP3 files. It was the most useful option to get music over the internet. However, it was not entirely legal. The most popular service was Napster, but after a few months laws against these illegal programs started to appear, which finally caused the end of the service in 2001. Daniel decided to take that idea and work on it, to offer a similar service within the limits of the law. To begin with, he needed to find a co-founder interested in his business idea to help him with the initial investment, and that is how Daniel decided to propose it to Martin Lawrenson, co-founder of Trade Doubler, the company that had acquired his previous company Advertingo. They decided to use a freemium business model, which is based on offering a highly useful service to the consumer, launching a free version, but with certain limitations and launching a paid version, much more attractive for users who wanted a more complete service and with more value to have that option by paying a modest and affordable monthly subscription. In this way, the customer is allowed to try a small preview of your service without having to pay anything. The proposal was quite desirable for the public since streaming was something that was booming. And in addition, the fact of being able to access millions of songs immediately in a totally legal way was something unthinkable at the time. However, the first big problem soon appeared. Getting licenses from the record companies was not easy. They did not trust the business model presented by Spotify as they did not see the future in the subscription system and monthly flat rate as a valid way to combat piracy. These negotiations were quite difficult and delayed Spotify's market launch for more than two years. As they saw that getting worldwide licenses was very complicated, they decided to accelerate Spotify's market launch and start generating revenue as soon as possible. To do this, they focused on the European market, they signed contracts with European firms. So Spotify was officially launched in 2008, but the service was only available in six major European countries. It would still take three more years to reach the United States as the record labels were not very convinced. However, as of 2019, they had a presence in 79 different countries and territories. But Spotify was a hit right from the start in Europe and people were delighted to be able to access the huge library of music without the need to download anything and instantly. The free service was ad supported, but also had many limitations. In contrast, premium users could listen for as many hours as they wanted and didn't have to bear the program's boring ads. Many might think that Spotify's revenue was based on these ads and the advertising they end up consuming from these free users. But in reality, in 2013, 22% of users were premium and offered in total 90% by the company's revenue, thus proving that advertising was not their business model. In reality, their free service works as an incentive for interested parties to try it out and decide if they are interested in paying a monthly fee for more features. By the end of 2013, the platform already had 36 million active users, 8 million of which were premium paid accounts. However, over time they realized how annoying it was for free users to have an hour's restriction, and that it was not an effective way to incentivize them to switch to the paid service. So he decided to remove this limitation, choosing more attractive ways to motivate users to convert, such as upfront offers, more paid advertising, and improving the features and services of premium accounts. One thing that makes Spotify very special as a music platform and social network is personalization. 
Users can listen to groups they like and the platform offers similar groups so that they can discover new songs and artists. In addition, thanks to its Discover Weekly application, the program itself is able to generate a weekly playlist of songs and groups that the user does not usually listen to or does not know based on their musical tastes. In fact, approximately one-third of all music listened to on Spotify comes from one of these personalized playlists. The positioning of this brand is very large globally, and has had accelerated growth and certainly has many innovative strategies. However, it still does not generate the expected profitability. In this scenario, its managers have generated a process that allows to generate income mainly from the growing number of paid subscribers. In recent times, we realized that Spotify wanted to go beyond music and podcasts. Recently, the company revealed in a meeting with its investors that it would enter the audiobook market. Finally, in September 2022, is doing so. Under the idea of becoming the application that concentrates the distribution of the main audio content formats that people consume, Spotify now also offers a catalog of 300,000 audiobooks for users in the United States. The rollout of audiobooks in the U.S. market is just the first step. The company says that based on this experience, it will continue to bet on the formed and will plan launches in other countries. It remains to be seen if Spotify manages to convince users to pay individually for each audiobook instead of paying a subscription and to which other countries this proposal will reach. What is clear is that the audio market continues to transform and Spotify will remain the leader at least in the short and medium term. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.